Welcoming back to MSD Learning World. In this video, we are going to see about lexical analysis process. Already I have told you what is the use of lexical analysis phase. So the lexical analysis phase will be getting the high level language as the input and it segregates the token present in the program. And it identifies the type of the token. So now, what is the purpose of lexical analysis? Now, lexical analyzer is the machine which is used to perform the lexical analysis process. The lexical analyzer will be performing two process. As I have already discussed in the last video, it performs two process. The first process is the scanning and the second process is the lexical analysis. So, already we have seen the process of scanning. Scanning is nothing but it will be getting the input from the high level language and it will be storing in the input buffer and from the input buffer the tokens are taken and given to the lexical analysis. So now we are going to concentrate in the lexical analysis process. So now the retrieved token from the input buffering method has to identify the type of the token. So now here we are going to create the lexical analyzer because we are going to create the compiler for any programming language. So now we have to create the lexical analysis. So the input token from the high level language is given to the lexical analysis phase. So this phase will be taking the token from the high level language and it will be checking with a predefined finite automata present in the lexical analyzer to identify the type of the token. So if we want to create the lexical analyzer, we must be able to create the finite automata for all the existing tokens present in the programming language. So we should have the knowledge of creating the finite automata for all the possible token present in the programming language. So now to create the finite automata, we should have the knowledge on regular expression because the input given to the finite automata is the regular expression. So token from the high level language is taken and for that tokens, we have to create the regular expression because the regular expression will be the input given to the finite automata. Now, if we are creating the possible finite automatas for all the token present in the programming language, then when the user is giving the input program, our lexical analyzer will be checking those tokens and it will be finding the type of the token. So now in this video, we are going to see how to create the regular expression for all the possible tokens present in the programming language and how are we going to create the finite automata. Now let us start with the regular expression. As I have already told you, regular expression is defined by R and it is the set of rules to specify the tokens. What are the tokens? As I have already discussed, it is keywords, punctuations, variables, operators and constants. So for all those tokens, already we have seen how the regular expressions will be. Yes. So if R is the regular expression for the given set of tokens, how are we going to create the regular expression? It contains three operators, union, union can be represented as plus or slash, closure, closure is represented by star, which is a star closure, which represents one or more representation, plus, plus represents positive closure, which is one or more, and this star represents zero or more. Zero or more occurrence, plus is nothing but one or more occurrence. And dot, which is a concatenation operator. So union, concatenation, closure. Closure may be star closure or positive closure. Now let us see an example, how to create the regular expression. So now, write a regular expression for the set of all strings A comma B with starting with A and ending with AB. So here we have to create a regular expression that satisfies this condition, starting with A and ending with AB. But the strings will be having the combination and the set of all A comma B. So let us see now starting with A. So your regular expression must compulsorily start with A. But start with A and it can be having any number of A's. So we should have a positive closure because positive means one or more occurrence of A. 
So it can start with the single A or 2A or 3A or N number of A's. Because the regular expression we should create which that should match with all the possible set of strings that are created that satisfies this condition. So A plus then ending with AB. So it should end with AB. But it is not a single AB. You can end with any number of ABs. So you can have again a positive closure. That means at least one AB or any number of ABs. Now in between what is the condition? In between you can have occurrence of either A or B. So either if you spell the word either then it is nothing but plus that is union. Union means either. Dot means followed by. Star means zero or more. Plus means one or more. So now in between it may be either A or B which are 0 or more number of times. So this will be the regular expression for the first problem. Now coming to this, write a regular expression for the set of all strings A comma B with starting with 2A. So 2A ending with B. So ending with B. You can have any number of Bs. You can have any number of 2As. In between, you can have A plus B, the whole star. I think you are clear now. Having three A's in the string. So, having three A's. That three A's may be either at the ending or at the starting. So, you must have A, A, A. That may be any number of times. Suppose, if it is starting, then before you can have A plus B, the whole star. Ending also, you can have a plus B, the whole star. Now coming to the fourth one. Having B A as the substring. So if it is B A as the substring, the B A, B A may be either in the front or at the back. So B A. It may be either once or twice. So A plus B, the whole closure. And A plus B, the whole closure. I think you are able to understand what the regular expression, how, how are we able to create. Is it clear? Yes. Now coming to the now we have seen regular expression. So we shall see how to create a finite automata for the given regular expression. Now whenever you want to create a finite automata, the finite automata can be created for the regular expression by using some method. So now let us see what a finite automata is. Before converting a regular expression in fi into finite automata, what is mean by finite automata? So finite automata is a machine which recognizes the token which recognizes the tokens so the tokens can be of anything all the five types mm -hmm. now the finite automata can be divided into three types one is deterministic finite automata or non-deterministic finite automata or non-deterministic finite automata with epsilon closure or nfa epsilon so non-deterministic finite automata with epsilon transition so now, finite automata is represented by the set of all states and transition. Here 1 and 2 are the states. Transition, it is moving to the state 1 is moving to 2 by getting the input symbol A. This is what is the transition. And the starting state is always represented by the single arrow mark symbol. And the ending state is represented by the doubled circle. So this is what is the representation of the finite automata. Now we will see what is the difference between DFA, NFA and NFA epsilon. So DFA, deterministic finite automata. In deterministic finite automata, the finite automata will be deterministic in its transition. From one state, if the automata is getting any input symbol, it will be having only one transition. At any time, the finite automata will know for which state it has to move for the given input symbol. That is what is deterministic. For example, let us see the first automata. From the state 1, when it is giving input A, it is going to the state 2. So, the automata is deterministic. If I am not at all giving any input when the machine is in the state 1, then the deterministic finite automata is deterministic to be in that same state itself. That is what is an ideal moment. So, now coming to NFA. The finite automata is non-deterministic. That means when an automata is present in a single state, when an input symbol is given to that state, 
the automata is non deterministic to move to which state that means for a given input symbol a single state may have two or more transitions to any number of states then the machine is non deterministic and it doesn't know to which state it has to move for that given input symbol that is what is non deterministic now coming to non deterministic finite automata with the epsilon transition in nfa epsilon the machine will be able to move to the next state even without giving the input symbol and the machine will be non deterministic also because the machine doesn't know whether to process epsilon transition and go to the next state or whether it has to be in the idle state because without giving the input the machine is non deterministic whether to be in the same state or whether to move to the next state so whenever a machine is having an epsilon transition then compulsorily it is a non deterministic finite automata with the epsilon transition now let us see the next finite automata and now you just figure it out whether it belongs to which type of automata now the state 1 when the machine is getting the input symbol a it remains in the same state when the when the state is getting the symbol b it goes to the second state from the second state if it is a present in the same state if it is b it goes to the third state yeah it is clear that it is a deterministic finite automata for any given input symbol a comma b the state has only a single transition now coming to here from the state 1 it is getting the symbol a and it is going to 2 it is deterministic from the state 2 for the a and b it is having only a single transition so this is also a dfa so the 1 2 and 3 is deterministic finite automata coming to the fourth automata from the state 1 if i give the input symbol a it is going to the state 2 from the input symbol for the input symbol b it is remains in the same state so for the state 1 it is deterministic now coming to the state 2 if i am giving a it goes to the state 1 if i am giving b now the second state is non deterministic because for the input symbol b the machine does not know whether to process the self loop and b in the same state or move to the final state this is what is deterministic finite automata even though if a, a single state is non deterministic the entire automata will be a non deterministic finite automata now coming to the fifth one for the state 1 if i give the input symbol a the machine is non deterministic whether to process in the self loop or go to the final state so this fourth and fifth will be a non deterministic finite automata now coming to the the last machine in the last machine it is compel without even seeing the processing of the transition for the input symbols you can deliberately tell that this machine is a non deterministic finite automata with an epsilon transition because whether the machine is satisfying the deterministic property or a non deterministic property the machine will be having an epsilon transition means it is an nfa epsilon because once the machine is having an epsilon transition the machine is always non deterministic whether to process the epsilon transition or been in the same state so this is what is the difference between dfa nfa and nfa epsilon let me make you very clear what is dfa nfa nfa epsilon with a suitable examples so now what are we going to do so for the tokens we have to create the regular expression from the regular expression we must be able to create the automata so now for the given regular expression how how can you create the dfa because when you consider this three machine which machine is more efficient the deterministic finite automata is more efficient because the machine is very deterministic and it does not have any ambiguous condition so whenever we are creating a lexical analyzer we should create deterministic finite automata for the regular expression as well as the dfa that we create must be a minimized one what is mean by minimized that should not be any state which is useless all the state present in the finite automata must be useful in the transition must be useful in the execution so we must always create the minimized dfa whenever we are creating the lexical analyzer so how can we create minimized dfa there are two process of methods one is transition block method and the second one is optimization of dfa based patterns now let us see transition block method in this video now when we create a transition block method for minimized dfa the given regular expression must be converted to nfa epsilon and the nfa epsilon must be converted to dfa and that dfa must be converted to minimized dfa now let us see 
how to create NFA epsilon by the regular expression. So for a given regular expression, how can we create NFA epsilon? Any regular expression R will be compulsorily having a single starting state and a single finding state. When R equal to MT, then it is single starting state with a single final state. This is what the regular expression is, which is having MT. When R equal to A, you will have a single initial state and you will have a single final state with a transition for A. When you have R equal to epsilon, a single initial state with a single final state and having a transition for epsilon, then compulsorily you have to number the state as 1 and 2. Whenever you are creating an automata, starting state representation and the final state representation is compulsory. So now this is what is for R equal to MT, R equal to A and R equal to epsilon. Now we must be able to create the finite automata for the operators of the regular expression. Already we know the operators are union, concatenation and closure. So whenever you want to create a finite automata for R equal to R1 plus R2, the R1 must be on the top, R2 must be on the bottom. This methodology of creating the finite automata is said to be Thomson's construction. Thomson's construction. So now, suppose if R equal to A plus B, A is also a regular expression. So we will be creating a single starting state and a final state with A and a single starting state and a final state with B. And if you will be creating a new initial state and a new final state. From initial state to the initial state of A, have epsilon transition. From initial new initial state to the initial state of R2 expression, have an epsilon transition. From the final state of A to the new final state, have an epsilon transition. From the final state of B to the new final state, have an epsilon transition. This is what is the finite automata or NFA epsilon for R equal to A plus B. Now when you are numbering, you must number from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now when you have R equal to A into B. So create a automata for A. Create automata for B. Now the initial state of A will be the initial state of the entire automata. The final state of B will be the final state of the entire automata. The, from the final state of A to the initial state of B have an epsilon transition and now this will be the finite automata for R equal to A into B. So now you have to number the state. Now when you have R equal to A star, create a automata for A with the initial state to the final state. Now have a new initial state and have a new final state. From the new initial state to the initial state of A, have a epsilon transition. From the final state of A to the new final state, have the epsilon transition. Mark this as a initial state. From the final state to the initial state of A, have epsilon transition. From the initial state to the new final state, have an epsilon transition. Then you number the state. You can number the states either starting with 1 or starting with 0. This is how you create the fine f epsilon for the given regular expression. I think you understood how to create the regular expression for given token and how to create the finite automata for the given regular expression. I think you understood this. In the next video, we will be seeing how to create the minimized DFA for the given regular expression. Thank you. Do not forget to like and share the video. Thank you.